Hello friends, we are back with our new video. In this video, I will discuss how to draw multiple functions together in R or R Studio using ggplot2 that you can use for your official presentation or in your publication. Please visit our website statswither.com for more details and if you have any queries, shoot us an email at learnstatisticswithr at gmail.com. There are many types of functions as we have already discussed in our video how to draw a function in R using ggplot2. Here we focus on drawing multiple continuous functions together. If you want to draw some discontinuous functions together or some mixture of continuous and discontinuous functions together, please watch our video how to draw a function in R using ggplot2 and then watch today's video. The overall process involves several steps and I will discuss stepwise. So let's begin. We illustrate our full procedure by drawing three normal density functions together. We assume all of them have the same mean zero and different standard deviations 1, 1.5 and 2 respectively. First, by repeating what we have learnt in the video meant for a simple function, we can draw these three density functions separately. Note that we discussed choosing the three sigma limits for the x-axis and hence while all these functions appear to have similar shape, they have different x-axis. Now we want to draw them together. First, note that while we need to compare multiple functions, we need to plot them over a same interval. Here we consider an interval between minus 5 and plus 5 and create a fine grid xx of length 10 thousands. Next we evaluate the three normal density functions over xx and store the outputs into the vectors d1, d2 and d3 respectively. Now we just need the vectors xx, d1, d2 and d3 and forget about everything else. Before we move to create the ggplots, first we need the package ggplot2. So we need to install it and call it into R or R Studio. For this we use the commands install.packages and library. Now we are ready to create the ggplot. In the console window type ggplot a blank bracket plus geom line within aesthetics x equals to xx, y equals to d1 and color equals to say black. Similarly at the lines for d2 and d3 as well. Note that if we do not use the colors it will be difficult to identify the functions and so either we need to choose some different colors or different line types. Here we stick to different colors. For D2 and D3, choose some valid color names, like we choose red and blue here. Now press enter. Ok, your first ggplot is here. There are a lot of things that we need to change. Let's do step by step. The curves look quite narrow and you might want to increase the line width. To do that, within geom line outside aesthetics, we set size equals to 1.5 for each D1, D2 and D3. The default size is 0.5, thus setting the size equals to 1.5 increases the line width. Another thing to note here is that we are storing the steps till now into P0. These are the basic steps that we will not change again and we will just keep on adding layers to P0. Now press enter. Ok, you get your second ggplot. You can see that the lines are wider now. We can see that the axis titles are just the names of the vectors x, x and the first function we plotted, that is d1. For making this figure clearer to your audience, let's rename the axis titles by value and density respectively. 
To do that, at the line x lab value within quotes plus y lab density within quotes. Now press enter. Okay, you get your third GG plot. You can see that the axis titles have changed. Next, you might be interested to add a title, say density comparison, at the top center. To do that, add two lines. First line is GG title density comparison within quotes. This adds the title. The default position of the title is left aligned. To move the title to the center, add the line theme plot dot title equals to element text age just equals to 0.5. Now press enter. Okay, you get your fourth GG plot. You can see that the figure title is created now and also it is at the top center. Next, note that the axis, the axis titles and the plot title are quite small. When you use this figure in your paper, it may be just a 2 inch by 2 inch image and then the titles will no longer be readable. To enlarge them, add the line theme axis dot text equals to element text size equals to 20. This increases the font of the axis. Axis dot title equals to element text size equals to 20. This increases the font of the axis titles and plot dot title equals to element text size equals to 20. This increases the font of the plot title. If you don't need one or two of them, you can remove those lines. The larger the size you want, you need to fix a larger number. So choose a number accordingly. Also note that we are storing the layers till now into P1 and we will add the subsequent layers on the top of P1. Now press enter. Ok, you get your fourth GG plot. You can see the axis, the axis titles and the plot title are much larger now. Next, let's note that the colors of the lines are not at all the colors we wanted. To fix this, add the line scale color identity breaks equals to a vector of colors black, red, blue all within quotes. Now press enter. Ok, you get your 6th GG plot. Note that even though the colors have changed to what we want, the legend has disappeared. If you want to add the description about the different functions within the caption, you do not need to add a legend and you might consider this plot for your manuscript. If you want a very customized legend, let's move on. Within scale color identity at the line guide equals to legend within quotes. Now press enter. Ok, you get your 7th GG plot. You can see that the legend is back now. Note that the title and the labels of the legend are not very informative. Suppose we want to change the legend title to say SD variation and the labels to say SD equals to 1, SD equals to 1.5 or SD equals to 2. To do that within scale color identity at the line name equals to SD variation within quotes, this adds the legend title and also add another line labels equals to a vector with elements SD equals to 1, SD equals to 1.5 and SD equals to 2 all within quotes. Now press enter. Ok, you get your 8th GG plot. You can see the legend title and the labels are created now. Next, sometimes we prefer to use Greek letters within the legend. For example, sigma is a very common Greek letter that is used for the standard deviation of the normal distribution. So you might be interested to replace the SD equals to 1 etc to say sigma equals to 1 etc. This step is a very general one, nothing specifically for ggplot2. To do that, replace the quote SD equals to 1 to expression 
paste sigma comma equals to 1 within quotes comma separation equals to a blank quote. Similarly replace the other two labels. Note that we store the layers so far into P2 and we will add the subsequent layers on the top of P2. Now press enter. Ok you get your 9th ggplot. Note that the legend labels become right aligned which doesn't look good. You might want to make the legends left aligned. To do that add the line theme legend.text.align equals to 0. Now press enter. Ok you get your 10th ggplot. You can see that the legend labels are left aligned now. Next note that because the legend is outside the figure it wastes a lot of white space and also the grey area is not square. So you might want to move the legend within the figure. Suppose we want to move it near the right top corner. To do that within theme add the line legend.position equals to a 2 vector 0.8,0.8. Here these two numbers can be anything between 0 and 1. The larger the first argument is the legend will move towards right and larger the second argument is the legend will move towards top. So you need to choose two numbers so that the legend does not overlap with your functions. Now press enter. Ok you get your 11th ggplot. You can see that the legend is within the figure near the top right corner. Next note that the backgrounds of the legend keys are grey and you might want to make the background transparent. If you don't want to do this you can skip this step. Now to do that within theme add the line legend.key equals to element raped fill equals to transparent within quotes. Now press enter. Ok you get your 12th ggplot. You can see that the legend key backgrounds are transparent now. Next note that the legend title and the legend labels are quite small. To enlarge them within theme at the lines legend.text equals to element text size equals to 20. This increases the labels of the legend. Legend.title equals to element text size equals to 20. This increases the title of the legend. Now press enter. Ok you get your 13th ggplot. You can see that the legend labels are larger now. One more thing is that you might think the legend keys to be very small and you might want to increase their lengths. To do that within theme add the line legend.key.width equals to unit 1 comma centimeter within quotes. You can also choose some other number according to your requirement. Now press enter. Ok you get your final ggplot. You might consider this ggplot for your presentation or in your publication. Today's discussion was about plotting multiple continuous functions. Following similar procedures you can also create a plot for multiple discontinuous functions. In case you need to draw multiple discrete functions together you might consider a multiple bar chart. To learn how to do it watch our video how to create a multiple bar chart in R using ggplot2. If you found this video helpful please like comment share and subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon for more updates.